I may have mentioned before, with a soundbite that was taken particularly out of context, that I'm addicted to huffing gas in EVE Online. I do need to specify in EVE Online. And ultimately this is a really fun way to make some ISK. It's beginner friendly, the skills are a little bit intense to train early on, but the fact that I can take an 8 million ISK venture out and start huffing gas and it'll make its own cost back in 20 minutes, everything else from there starts becoming pure profit, well I think that's pretty neat. And this is also going to be one of the most controversial fits I think I've ever shown on this channel and probably ever will show show, so hopefully that sounds enticing. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the art form that is ninja huffing in the little yellow bug of joy that we know as the venture. And its most basic level ninja gas huffing is essentially warping into a gas site, harvesting as much of the gas as possible and then warping out before the enemies can destroy you. Essentially every time you warp to a gas site, the first time someone warps to a gas site, a timer starts and 15 to 20 minutes later a whole squad of enemies will appear on grid and they will destroy your venture if you're not paying attention. Now that sounds scary but it's actually really easy to deal with and in this video I'm going to show you how. If you find this useful please let me know, hit like on the video, subscribe for more content like this and drop a comment down below letting me know how you're getting on in EVE Online. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel I have a Patreon page, a PayPal tip jar and a Redbubble merchandise store and I just want to spend a brief moment to say thank you to everyone who does support this channel. It does mean the world to me. Every little helps. I know that not everyone can, so please don't stress out, but it does mean the world to me when people do. All that said and done then, let's jump right in to talking about ninja huffing in the venture. Getting started with ninja huffing is quick and easy. It has a very short list of prerequisites that you're going to need, so we'll go over that now. The first thing you're going to need is, of course, a venture. Unfortunately, you should have a few of those already lying around if you've done the career agent missions. There's a couple of ventures given to you via those. If you have already lost those, be aware you can go back and do the career agents again in the other areas of the uh, starting race that you've chosen. So if you've gone for, say, um, Minmatar and you've already done the career agents in one of their locations, there are two other locations you can do them in. You can even go out to the Galente, Caldari or the Amar career agents and start with them as well. It's a great way just to get a load of free ventures um, and a load of ISK on the side and it actually helps with the air career program as well. Now once you've got a venture in hand we are going to need to train some prerequisite skills. Fortunately there's a nice easy cheat method for that as well. In the description of this video is a referral link. If you click on that it will add 1 million skill points to your account and you don't need a new account for this, it just, you can't have already used someone's referral link. So if you haven't already used a referral link, drop down, get mine, get a million free skill points, and that's going to be more than enough to get you started. In regards to skills, you're of course going to need the very basic skills to undock a venture, which of course is the mining frigate skill. Then we're going to come into resource processing here in the skill book and go to gas cloud harvesting. Gas cloud harvesting is absolutely vital for this. Essentially, you can't even fit a gas cloud scoop to the venture until you've trained at least level one of this skill. And considering the venture is capable of fitting two gas cloud scoops, you want this up to level two at the very least. Essentially, each level of gas cloud harvesting allows you to fit one gas cloud skip, uh, scoop to a ship. You only therefore need it at level two. That allows you to fit the two gas cloud scoops that the venture can fit. So why might you ever take this further? Well, if you go all the way up to Gas Cloud Harvesting 5, then we can suddenly fit Gas Cloud Scoop 2s. And Gas Cloud Scoop 2s have literally double the yield of the standard Gas Cloud Scoop 1. This means that if you hit Gas Cloud Scoop 5, Gas Cloud Harvesting 5 skill, you are immediately doubling your yield during that 15-20 minute timer that you have to, to, to harvest as much as possible. You're going to get twice as much stuff in the same time limit. So if this is something you intend to do a lot, yeah, get it all the way up to five. You only need two, but get it all the way up to five. Beyond the gas cloud harvesting skill itself, there are probably a couple of other skills you'll want to pick up. The one I would most recommend, however, is under navigation, and that is evasive maneuvering. This is an improved skill at efficiently turning and accelerating a spaceship, 5% improved ship agility for all ships per skill level. Essentially, this is going to help you warp 
faster. This means that when something does appear, when the enemies do spawn into the gas cloud, it is less time for you to accelerate up to the 75% maximum velocity required to achieve warp. You warp away faster, therefore you get shot less and you're much less likely to be destroyed. If there is one skill you train for this after the gas cloud scoops, it is of course evasive maneuvering. I think this is probably the single most controversial fit that I have ever or will ever showcase on this channel because would you look at that? 7.8 million isk is the cost of this fit and there are so many empty slots, we've got so much power grid free, we've got no rigs, nothing, like what on earth are you doing Benzi? Proving a point is what I'm doing on this one. This is all tech one stuff and this is the bare minimum that you need to go gas huffing. This works. This is a fully functional gas huffer. Anything you do beyond this is purely additional. Yes, you might decide that you want rigs and mid slots like some shield extenders and stuff like that to help with survivability. My argument is don't get caught. Maybe you want something here for inertial stabilizers to help you warp that little bit faster and get out of a dangerous situation. Again, my answer is just don't get caught, plan better. We are literally running with two gas cloud scoop ones, a core probe launcher one, which will have probe launchers fitted in there so that we can scan our way down if things lock behind us, and a 5 mega newton warp, micro warp drive one. I'm not blinging this, I'm not using compacts, nothing. The absolute basics, and this is more than enough. Where do you go from here? Well, as I said, you might decide you want to add some shield tank to this. You might decide that you want to add something like inertial stabilizers or whatever to the low slots to help you move around a bit faster, but consider that all additional. This is what I'm running in this video. This is all you need. So first of all then, the theory and the setup. I've already scanned down this Class 4 J-Space system, I found a bountiful frontier reservoir that I want to do, I'm going to warp to this at zero. Now I've got a timer set up on my phone, but you can set it up on whatever the hell you fancy, set for 15 minutes. When someone first warps to a gas site, a 15 to 20 minute timer starts and the rats will spawn sometime between 15 and 20 minutes. So when that timer goes off, I know to be ultra careful that they are going to start at any second. Now in this case, the Bountiful Frontier Reservoir has two different gas clouds in it, a C-28 and a C-32. And I know that the C-32 is higher value for me, so that's the one I'm going for. I lock onto it, I hit approach, activate the micro warp drive for a cycle to get nice and close, and immediately start scooping. Essentially, I'm only using scoop 1s here, so I'm not going to be getting all that much. If you can skill into the scoop 2s, you literally double your yield, which means you double the amount of isk you earn doing this, right? It's that simple. So I'm going to move into position, and I'm comfortable sitting perfectly still for a couple of reasons. One, I'm in the very center of the cloud, which means no one can get to me cloaked, because that cloud will decloak anything that tries to approach me. This means that if someone wants to kind of warp in on my position, well, they still can do. Something like a saber could warp in and drop an interdiction sphere on me instantly, and there's very little I can do about that, except for the fact that I am parked. And remember, when you are at zero, you are not aligned to anywhere, which means you're aligned to everywhere. Alignment and warp mechanics require movement, and if you're at zero, you're essentially facing every single direction at once. If I were to try and orbit this central point, I risk A, moving outside of the range of the harvesting point, and B, if someone warps in and the point I want to warp out to is behind me, I have speed velocity going forward, which then needs to slow down whilst I realign, aim towards the point so that I'm within five degrees of where I want to warp to, and then I still need to get back up to the 75% of maximum velocity in order to achieve warp. By parking here and sitting perfectly still in the very center of this cloud, I am essentially aligned to everywhere at once. I go from zero to 75% at the minimal speed, at the minimal time that it is possible for me to do so. That is what the fitting screen is referring to. Time to warp from stationary. Stationary, you are pointing in every direction. You do not need to pre-align. This is something that I hear so many people talk about that they want to park a venture with it pointing in the right direction. That actual face of your ship means nothing if your velocity is zero. Anyway, I'm going to sit here now essentially descanning every few seconds just to make sure that no one is trying to scan me down or moving in on me. I'm going to zoom the camera out and just keep an eye on things because I want to see the full grid. That way I can see if anyone warps in on me. 
it's also just a little bit prettier than staring at your ship over and over again. But otherwise, we're going to skip ahead um, because otherwise this is just going to be 15 minutes of me talking um, and looking at literally what you're seeing now because this is the screen I'm looking at for the entire duration. Some time later. The 15 minute timer has now come and gone. We're actually close to about the 17 minutes now. And this means that those sleepers are going to arrive any second. Now, I've already clicked onto the star in the distance. I've moused over where it says warp to so that the second these guys appear, I can just click and immediately warp out. And they've just appeared. They have just appeared. So I click, 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 click. And I'm starting to warp instantly quick, uh, as quickly as I can. Um, a little bit slow on that one. And you can see the hit that I take there from one volley straight away. That's because I'm playing from Zimbabwean internet, which does give me a little bit of lag, but I'm now safe. That is it. That is the gas huffing. And if you look on the left-hand side at the whole hold that I've got there, in the 17 minutes or so that it's taken to reach this point, I have made myself almost 10 million isk. That's with gas scoops ones. So theoretically, with gas scoop twos being obviously double the yield of the gas scoop ones, I would be making almost 20 million isk in that 20 minute period. A million isk a minute is not bad at all in a ship that costs less than 10 million isk a time. I've made that ship's cost back and more. And if you're multi-boxing with a whole fleet of these, well, even better. But that's it, folks. That is how this works. Let me know if you enjoyed this in the comment section down below. Otherwise, good luck out there. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.